Welcome to Journey Through the Gate, your paranormal portal podcast, as we delve into the many questions and wonders brought on by the supernatural experience. What's on the other side of the gate? Let's find out together. Hello, all you wonderful people. I am actually, this looks like I'm on fire. I assure you I'm not. I'm burning sage. Welcome in. Uh, Steve, my wonderful friend, how are you? I'm doing good. Yeah, don't set yourself on fire there. I'm That's trying there not are, to. There's spiders in my house. Absolutely. How's Just everybody doing? Little... Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Another week gone by. Another 25th week. 25th of October. Can you believe it? This month is just... Whew. It's going. Would, would slow down a little bit. And but, here uh, it is, spooky yeah. season, and we had a wonderful time. We have had wonderful couple months here of Monday Madness. We've we've run the the gauntlet and back again on ghosts and everything else, and we're still talking and having a ball. Hello, my wonderful chat. How is everybody? Jackie, Oracles, and Beyond, wonderful Cassie. How you doing, love? Popped in on a wonderful show between her and Carol last night, pulling cards. They were just having a great time. I was falling asleep. They asked me to jump in, but I was like, Star-. I said, I'm naked in the bed. I can't come on. <laughs> uh, that never stopped you before. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm tired. I'm going to sleep. But I had to pop in to say hi to everybody. Hello, dear Ro- Rose Worthy. How are you? Blue Heron. Go ahead, Steve. Say hi to some of these wonderful people. Uh, Chris Jarvis. Chris Jarvis, Raid the Mermaid, uh, Rose Worthy 6. Blue Heron, um, I'm going backwards up the chat here. Go backwards Oracles up the chat. And beyond. Cassie, Aunt Edna is here. Hey, Aunt Edna, good hey, to see Aunt you. Hey, Aunt Edna. T-Rex, Pam Smith. And Thank you for sharing, you know, Cassie. Thank you, uh, Patriot, too, for sharing. The show's here. Melissa Nicole, how are you doing, love? Good to see you. I keep messaging and don't hear anything back. I'm hoping you're okay. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I'll tell you what, this has been like the best chat. I just want to talk about the chat a little bit about this family here that's come up. Um... You know, nothing but compliments about every medium that I've had on here. And, you know, I only have the best, Mm -hmm. you know, just because we've we've screened all through all the, you know, the woo woo stuff. So uh, every medium I have on here says they get nothing but wonderful love vibes, positive vibes, uh, all kind of um, what was the other one? Uh, Intellectual, Um, the questions, the heart. I was told this is from like three or four now so chat give yourself a pat on the back we know we have like this absolute uh black ops squad of mods on here that you know just handle things and welcome in new people and drop in links left and right for our guests and uh being kind to each other so if you are sitting through your day and every, all the crazies coming in by bucket loads and you think there can't be another sane place on this crazy woo woo show where we talk about the supernatural and the uncanny and the mystical and the magical this is where you find it right here in this chat couple hours on a monday night what do you think steve no oh, i think it's great I, I look forward to mondays i do as well now tonight we have a little something special for you i'm going to let steve bring in our next guest and he's he, i'm not even sure where he's hailing from tonight steve do you know <laughs> yeah I, I was gonna ask him which side of the pond he was on but he's uh, originally from uh, cornwall uk okay um very brilliant author of ghost stories he's got a couple of books out that you guys definitely need to check out uh he spends half his time in cornwall and the rest of his time in uh i think illinois is where he's at with his mm-hmm. american wife but so anyway nice. uh, let's give it up for mark anthony wyatt mark come on in here welcome Deezer. him in welcome <laughs> him in chat welcome in mark how you doing hon can you hear us does he have his mic on? Can you hear him, Steve? Uh, I can't hear anything. Try clicking your mic again, hon. It says... here, I'll make you... 
Okay, if that doesn't work, we're going to try to get you to go out and follow the link back in. But I think... I don't have you off here. Let's see. Let me check your mic settings. Nope, you're good here. Yeah, because, like, mm -hmm. it puts a little icon up there. Yep, it does. And we I'm heard, not seeing heard it. him earlier when in, I know. Uh, the green room backstage. He's not muted on my side. Try clicking your mic again, Mark. We'll get it, chat. Hang in there. And Edna said, Amazon sent me two strange things in the woods. Think I'll give one as a gift. Oh, how nice. A stocking <laughs> stuff for a spooky. Awesome. Okay, now he's Hope showing. I charge you twice. Now he's showing that it's off. Say something, Mark, so I know if you click it. Like, recite a poem. Something dirty. <laughs> give us the filthiest limerick you know. There once was a man from Cornwall. <laughs> <laughs> there, I started you off. I can see him talking, but I can't hear him. What do we normally do in this in state? Should he go back out, follow the link back in, see what happens? Uh, let's see. Now he's muted. Well, it's now changing. I think maybe if he tries to talk while he's muted. This is fun. Hello? There, there he is. Wait! Whoa! There, there you went. Hello? Oh. We got, we got a hello out of him. We got a hello. Whatever you just clicked, it was correct. Hello? When you said hello. There it is. There it is. Say something else. <laughs> maybe, maybe he's just messing with us. Maybe he's not yeah, actually saying Maybe I think he's doing it. He's he, doing he's it. He's a geezer purpose. like that. He is. He is. <laughs> <laughs> he is scallywag. He's like, I'm just going to sit here and move my mouth. And <laughs> <laughs> it could be. I wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is the way it's going to be. Mark's first book I want to bring up is Wyatt's uh, Weird World or Wild World? Weird. Weird World. Act us out the first Weird. story in the book. And oh, yeah. there he is. Oh. I heard him once. I heard him say weird. Have you got me now? I've yeah. got you now. Weird. There he is. <laughs> weird. Wyatt's Weird World. Uh, yes, I, I hear I, you now. I've, 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 hello. Yes, I hear no. you. Okay. Okay, now I hear you. Hello, what, Mark? <laughs> Hello, Cisco. Welcome. Can you hear me? I hear you. Hello, five Steve. five. Can you hear me? Yeah, sure can, Mark. Yay! Can you hear him, chat? Okay. Five five. Um, um, I apologize for. It. I don't know. I haven't done anything unusual. I've I've got everything on. Um, it's okay. You're you're hearing me now, aren't you? I can hear yeah. you now. Yes. Okay. Yep. Fine. Uh, yep. I, I, I'll try not to touch anything. <laughs> Don't touch a damn thing, Mark. <laughs> Hands free. Hands free. <laughs> Hands free. Okay, great. Perfect. Yeah. Well, there it's... you go, my friend. Welcome in. Steve introduced me to Mark uh, years ago. Um, I believe Mark was one of the authors you, uh, you kind of got started going, didn't you, Steve? Yeah, he, he sent me some, some stories that... Uh... I think it was the one about his father's uh, encounter with the, the ghostly coal miner. And I thought, man, have you got uh, more of these? No. And he said he did. And I'm like, you need to write a book on these, dude. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <'cause, laughs> uh, gun, gunpowder. Gunpowder worker. Yeah. 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 Pretty good. <laughs> yeah. 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 I've t I don't know how, how much you can hear me talking. So just let, let me know when you, I, I don't want to be butting in on people. So. No, you're fine. You're absolutely fine. I can yeah. hear you. You have a titch of a delay between what you say and when you move. So it's extremely entertaining. Yeah. I say leave it like that. It's great. So the thing is, is you wrote a book. Was the first yeah. one why it's weird uh, world? Was that the first one or was it the Cornwall? It was. It, it was weird world. Why it's weird world. I wrote mm -hmm. it about six years ago. And I've recently... You, I think you put it up on your PR promo shot. Mm -hmm. I recently reissued it. So the, okay. so the cover shot you had has only been out there for... Uh, I've reissued a paperback mm -hmm. because originally it was only on Kindle. Mm -hmm. And I updated it because I had more information on a lot, a lot of the stories, um, including the gunpowder one, which Steve just referenced. Okay. Um, because in the years since I wrote... A lot of people came to me and basically, you know, st information came to me from that area, from people who'd seen things there. 
which was amazing because when I wrote the book, I couldn't get any other witnesses to any activity there at all. Mm -hmm. So I only had my father's story for that particular story. <laughs> and it was like after I wrote the story, floodgates opened. Um, not, not, necess not because of me necessarily, but mm -hmm. people started talking about their experiences on Facebook pages around that area. Mm -hmm. And I was on to it and I contacted a few of those people and their stories sort of tallied, even though they, even though they didn't know each other, they had very similar stories about what they'd experienced. And also since those days, I, I've, I've stayed there a few times. Uh, there's a mm -hmm. pub very near to the gunpowder works and I've stayed there. It's very haunted, very haunted. And my daughter stayed there. My daughter stayed there with her boyfriend. And they had activity all night, but not that sort of activity. I think she was too scared for that. Activity. But uh, I think she fell in the room, and there probably was. So, um, yeah. So, I, and even I had, I had a weird experience when I went to go and see my daughter. Um, because we we didn't live in the same place. Mm -hmm. I went to visit. This is all after the book. This is long time after the book was written. Mm -hmm. And I was in the area. My daughter was staying at the Percy Arms pub, which is like, I don't know, a couple of hundred yards from the site of the gunpowder works. And I went to meet her there. And she told me, well, she told me a couple of things. They'd had activity the previous night where the TV is coming on all night off. Uh, the, the sensor in the shower was going on and on. Um, yeah, Chris is right there. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> nice right. one, Chris. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much, yeah. Um, so that's, that's sort of put me off my stride a bit. <laughs> sorry, <funny>. sorry. <laughs> um, no, it's, it's fine, it's fine. We've got so, people from all over the world here, that... Scotland and all over. So, you know, there oh, might you? be some people from close oh, by. You're talking about Cornwall, uh, yeah. England, correct? Okay. Of course. Well, yeah, uh, the people in Cornwall would, wouldn't call it Cornwall, England. But, well, some some would, some would. Mm -hmm. It's, um, they see themselves as a separate country, to oh. be honest. Mo a lot of them oh, do. Oh, wow. Um, but, yeah, yeah, you wouldn't believe it for us something that small but yeah they do mm -hmm. uh, because of because of a history you know the history's there anyway um my daughter was when she was there she popped outside to have a cigarette unfortunately she smokes um and while she was having a smoke she was looking over the road now this is a very small village so you've got we've got the gunpowder works which are obviously decrepit you know for uh, nearly 100 years they've not been used um, very close to 100 years, actually. Almost 100 years since they've been disbanded. And it's just ruins there now. And then you've got the park, which is like a couple of hundred yards away. And then you've got a small street. And then across the road, you've got the railway station. You've got Cheerworth Railway Station. That's the village. And the whole area is just soaked in this whole haunting you know the hauntings in the pub it's on the site it's in the road outside the pub which is where my father saw the um, factory worker on the anniversary of an ex of two explosions as it turns out I found this out since I wrote the book the first mm. time uh, two explosions on the same day there wasn't just one um, I mean I, I'm sort of jumping all over the place but I'm just trying to put you give you a geography Mm -hmm. Opposite the pub where my daughter was standing is a railway station and a crossing, what we call a level crossing in England, which is basically two massive white gates either side of the line, the, rail, the railroad, as you would call it. And these gates open and cars can go backwards and forwards when the lights are right, you know, when it's safe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, she saw a man just... She was just like, you know, in that sort of zoned out space. She was just standing there relaxing. And she saw a man walk behind a car that was parked 
by the station, but just outside. And the man never got to the other side of the car. So he sort of walks behind this small car. He never got in the car. There was nowhere he could have gone. He just faded. She said he had like a hunchback. Or he was oh, sort of man. slightly hunchback, you know. Um, so, so she had that little experience. Um, now, on, I, I'm, I'm trying not to go all over the place. There's so much. There's so much I can tell you about this place. So many different things. But on, the, on that evening, I had said goodbye to her. And I got back into my car in the car park just outside the pub. As I say, it's very near the gunpowder works. And as I was sat there just preparing myself to drive to a place called Aldershot, which is sort of 20 minutes away, I, my light inside my car, you know these manual switches in the car on the ceiling? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where you literally have to flick the switch back and forth. It's a metal, like a metal. Mm -hmm. So you physically have to push it and it clicks. I think there's three positions, on, neutral and off or something like that. And the light came on, I think it was three times. So it came on, went off, came on, went off, came on, went off. I was nowhere, wow. well, I was near it, but I wasn't doing it. Right, and I was the right. only one in the car at that point. Wow. So right. it was somebody, the way, the way I look at it, it was somebody trying to just tell me, look, I'm here. I'm here. I'm with you, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, which may may well have been my, my father, to be honest. It may well have been my father. Um hmm because he, he died in 2012 and he had an experience there and he knew I was writing the book and so on so um could have been but could have been yeah now he he was the inspiration the, the in for you yeah for you writing the 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 about the gunpowder works yeah. guy that he saw wasn't there a story oh, in yeah. there was it a motorcycle or a bicycle or something that happened where somebody disappeared or was, yeah. was a, uh, what's that one yeah, that's that, on the that cover the of the book that right was it. oh okay yeah okay, that's tell the us actual, that one that, that is the actual story so, well that that's basically what happened originally that was um we we so the gunpowder works actually lived on because okay i'll give you the gunpowder works was in use from 1626 uh 16 yeah just trying to i might have got it wrong 1620 something to 1926 and in mm -hmm. 1926 i'm pretty sure that's right I, without my notes that it was shut down um you know this is like what ten eight eight years after world war one finished and basically it was all closed down and shortly after they adapted some of the buildings that was still you know hadn't been demolished there's there's a lot of it still there and they um converted them into domestic use so from like night the late 1920s up until 1960 one i think it was six well the end of 61 people lived on that site and i don't know whether they had experiences i actually know well apart from my father i actually know a guy who has written two fantastic books about the gunpowder work well i've got loads of them there's quite a few but he he lived on the site like we did so i i'm one of five kids I'm the middle one, and I was the last one. I was the, so I was the, f the third one, who lived. So, number one, two, and three, we lived with my mum and dad on that site in one of those converted magazine buildings. Magazine is important because that's to powder. So they they called them magazine cottages. And we lived on one of those. Now, I was only a baby. So when this, when my dad had his experience, I didn't know about it. Well, it's not in my memory anyway, put it like that. But my mum most certainly did. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it was my mum that told me the story, like when I was a little bit older, probably seven or eight, by which time we'd left that. We'd moved, and it's on a, it's on a river. I mean, obviously gunpowder works all had to be on rivers because you needed the water to drive a mill and all the different functions you know and what they did they used a, the local river which was the Tillingbourne 
because it had the right trees. You needed certain trees to make gunpowder. Um, off the top of my head, it was Alder, A-L-D-E-R. Um, I'm not sure if it's ash as well, but I know it's definitely Alder. Um, they had most of the materials they needed on the site. The rest of it they imported. And there were only, off the top of my head, I think two, two others in England that had gunpowder works. One was place over to the east of London. Uh, yeah, the east of London. And the other one was up in Cumbria, in the north of England, right up the far north. And as you know, I'm sure you know, you've gunpowder works in North America. Mm -hmm. And they, they look very similar because they did the same job, you know. Um, so, so my father, he used to work on the steam engines. He was a fireman on the footplate and worked all different hours, really weird sort of shifts when they would work. They'd start at like two o'clock or four o'clock or whatever. Wouldn't they? Um, so he had to cycle to work in Guildford, uh, which was, I did work this out once. I think it's about five miles, something like that. And it, you've got to remember this was like 19... What would happen? It? Um, but he was when he, or he had his experience. He didn't have, you know, he was cycling this route, this really rural route. Very few street lights, very little traffic because this was 1961. It's not like now where there's cars everywhere, you know, it wasn't like that. So he would have like these long, lonely rides back and forth to work at odd times. Um, and on one particular night, he was coming home and he, he went, he just passed that pub, the Percy Arms pub, uh, when he saw, well, he saw this, this, what it looked like a man on a bicycle, which it was, sort of, up ahead of him, but he was moving slowly. Um, and my, my dad was like only 27 at the time and, you know, very fit. He caught up with this, what he thought, his description was he was, uh, I'm trying to remember the word he used. Uh, I'd have to, I'd have to look. It's something like shiny, not shiny, something like that. I, it's gone now. I've actually got it written down because my, my brother actually interviewed him um, a few years ago while he was still okay. And uh, the word will come to me later anyway, but he, he described him as um, gl glowing. I think it might have been glowing. I'd, I'd have to check that. Oh, wow. And what he did, he, he, he passed him. You see, as, as you'll know, if you've had any experiences, I'm sure you have. Uh, I've had a few myself, quite a few. You don't think it's unusual at the time. So mm -hmm. people who haven't had these experiences, they say to you, they say, well, why didn't you get a camera? And, why didn't you do this and why yeah. didn't you do that? But when these things happen, it's just no your normal life. Yeah, you and don't you, think about you know, it. You're just too you smacked and just stand yeah. there like, what's that? Yeah, it, exactly. Exactly. And of course, in those days, you didn't have mobile phones anyway. You didn't carry a phone with a um, camera with you. Right. You know, you just wouldn't. Um, so anyway, so he's he went past this, this man on a bicycle. Glittery, that's the word, glittery. Is, there you go. Words. A, glitter, a glittery old boy. I knew it was like that, <laughs> glittery. Um, and basically, as he looked round, he had somehow weirdly sort of noticed that he didn't, he said he was like inwardly lit, like glowing. Hmm. And for some reason, he noticed he didn't have, we used to have to have, I mean, nobody cares now, nobody does it, but you used to have to have lights on your bicycles. And you could literally get stopped by the and fined, you know, if you didn't have a light on your bike or you'd get told off. Mm -hmm. um, and in those days, you all had these rear lights on your on your back, you know, on that, um, the, the fork that comes down. Now, this guy didn't have one on his bike. And my dad was like, I don't know why he even brought it up, really, but he went to tell me, you got no lights on me, you know, as he passed him. Mm -hmm. And he said, as he turned around to pass him, the, this, whatever it was on the bike, turned to look at him, and basically he had no face. Oh, oh wow! And that, ob 
that obviously put the wind up him, to <laughs> put it mildly. <laughs> right. That's why he didn't need yeah. any light. He didn't have any so, light. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he, he basically did what, you know, you can imagine, he was, he was really, at that point, you'd be scared. I, I defy anyone to say they wouldn't be scared. Right. No face and whatsoever. He, he, yeah. He, he, yeah, just like blurred, just blurred. So he cycled away as quickly as he could with his legs probably shaking. And he looked around behind him to see if this thing was following him. And it wasn't there. And he, and he looked around very quickly after he, you know, it wasn't like five minutes later, it's very quick. And there was nowhere that this spike could have gone. So that was the story that my, he, he wouldn't talk about it. Now, what, I mean, people who, people listening in who won't know, obviously, you know, you, we all form pictures in our head, boys, what will look like, what they're like and all this. Well, I can tell you that, you know, my, my dad was six foot four. We, I don't know what, you, what stones, a stone is like 14 pounds. So my dad was about 17 stones, something like that. He's a big man. Mm. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't really, um, apart from snakes, possibly. I don't think he likes snakes <laughs> any more than I do. But he, 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 he was, you know, he was a good, he was a big guy. Um, but it just scared him. It shook him up. And he hurried home. Yeah, it shook him up. And he hurried. My mum said that when he came home, so this is on the Gunpowder Works site now. This is like five minutes, maybe ten minutes later. Because he had to go past, uh, up to a, like a little lane. There was like a little dirt track that went down. Through. It's all still there. All of this is there. You can see all this place, these places. It's un, under, if anyone knows, it's under St. Martha's. It's a chapel that's sort of 600 feet high. The whole of the gunpowder works is underneath the chapel in the woods. So you can't see it from the main road. It's all hidden away in the woods. And so you've got a river and you've got the, the buildings and so on. Well, that's where we And at the time, because we lived on two different properties within the works, the old works, at the time we were in a cottage that was right on the back of the, like an embankment by Chilworth Manor House. And so he, he had to go down this lane to get to, well, it was the best way in, the quickest way in. And when he got home, he evidently came through the door and slammed the door and he sat with his back to the door. I, I, you know, just one of those reactions. And he just sat there and my mum was trying to find out why he was so freaked out and what had happened. And she said he couldn't speak properly. He was just like, you just know, he really just couldn't form up. the words because he was, yeah. It took him some time to actually explain what he saw. Do you, and do you remember for a big seeing man him, like uh, that? Yeah, he must. Have, well, for a big man like that, you know, it's hard. Him. It's really yeah. hard because yeah, yeah. They, they, it's yeah. something that they can't wrap their minds around and they're stunned, you know, no. uh, and then you get yeah, yeah. shook up because you don't know how to explain it. And I think that happens a lot when no, people right. see ghosts and stuff like that. So the first book you wrote... Yeah, yeah. That was the inspiration and, you know, the, the how the people's reaction, your dad's reaction and all that. The other two books that you wrote, are those basically more historical on Cornwall or is it also haunted happenings yeah. and things? Oh, it's, it's a lot of hauntings. It's, it's, ever, it's everything except Bigfoot because at the time, <laughs> you know, I didn't know of any, any Bigfoot stuff down. I don't think there's any Bigfoot there. I mean, I don't know. Actually, strangely enough... I heard something, I was listening to a podcast, I don't know who it was now, I'd have to think about that. Um, yeah, something the other, something was said the other day about, oh, I know what it was, sorry, I'm getting, there's so it's much okay. going on in my life. I, I was at it's a okay. paranormal, in fact, my t-shirt, can you see my t-shirt? I cannot, I let's see. That. Oh, there it is, yes, yeah. I do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's wonderful, so, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, cool. so that's, um, that, I, I'm in, uh, to answer your question earlier, Steve, I'm in the US at the moment. I've been here ever since it kicked off. Oh, wow. Um, You've been here so a while, then. I'm wow. in Springfield. 
Oh okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm in Springfield, Illinois, uh, which is where you know Lincoln used to work, as you know. Land of Lincoln, yeah. Land of Lincoln, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that the T-shirt I just shown you, a friend of mine is a professor that used to work at. Um, what's it? Uh, yeah, you just said it. The Land of Lincoln College, whatever it is, un university type place. And he runs a paranormal group now that he's retired. He's younger than me, he's retired, <laughs> like, you know. Um, anyway, he runs this group. It's a fantastic group. Loads and loads of good people. Uh, and I was at a meeting there the other day where they were talking about Bigfoot and uh, in regard to something in America. And they were... T Whereabouts are you, Paradox? He's just Where are you at, Paradox? Up. We'll let you know. Anyway, so uh, um, somebody was some, somebody was talking about. Um, he's saying blue, blue diamond. Some, some, right. Is it blue I, diamond? I, is I, that I don't place here? As you can tell. So, so St. Louis, St. Louis. I don't know. He's saying St. Louis. Oh right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love I love St. Louis. I go down there a lot. Um, so anyway, sorry, I'm, I'm telling my mind's all over the place. That's okay. That's so, okay. I'm just letting you know. I'm just letting talk? you know. I know we have a yeah, little yeah. of a delay, but I'm letting you know that uh, my mods okay. are dropping all of your websites um, and uh, your book uh, links to your books and stuff, too. I, so we've got great mods here. Thank you, mods. Thank you. And uh, Cisco, I've uh, got a you. screen shared there. I... Okay, you got it. Go yeah. ahead. Uh, you you have to add it to the the chat, but yeah. you can see. Okay, it, let me see it there. right here. Hold on, he's got a screen share, and bip. Okay, go. great. There, there you go. go. There's it your books the there. Mark's books there. He got the the bicycle there, the mm -hmm. glowing bicycle, mm -hmm. the luminous. Yep. Uh, Thank you. Pattern. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. yeah. It's very nice. It's a nice picture of you there, yeah. Mark. And the spirit of Cornwall, and that's yeah. volumes one and two. That's fantastic. That's right. Yeah, Love yeah. that. Love the so, covers so, too. So, okay. Thanks, Steve. They were yeah. Some I saw earlier something came up and it said medium.com. That's. I don't know what uh, I did write a piece for them. I did one so that's not really my website. I don't really have a website, but there is some some stuff in there. I think. Um, so getting back to the Bigfoot. And we were talking about orbs, the big orbs, the really big ones that people, see, as opposed to the like ones you see in the images, mm -hmm. the, the big glowing ones that people see in woods quite a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and somebody was saying that, you know, talk about interdimensionality and all this stuff, that some people have claimed that they've actually seen Bigfoot holding these things in front of them, almost Whoa. like they're a portable gate, gateway, if you like. So that like a portal. this was a conversation. Wow. Which takes me back to what you said about what I said about not knowing <laughs> not knowing any um Bigfoot activity in Cornwall at the time. And I don't think I'm not sure that there is, but the link is that my friend Derek Thomas, who gave me some stories of his own from North Cornwall, um some really great stuff. He was on a, he was next door to the GCHQ. Um, I don't know if anyone knows what GCHQ, it's a, it's a oh, I don't remember what it stands for, General oh, Headquarters, General Communications Headquarters or something like, something like that. Um, and it's run by the NSA and the CIA, I think mostly the NSA and MI5. And it's on the North Cornish coast and I live very near to it. And there's lots of weird activity around there because I think they're being watched. Well, I know they're being watched. I know they are. So it's quite amusing because they're watching everyone else and they're being watched. And mm, loads, yes. loads of UFO activity around there, loads. And I, I had an experience there with a huge owl. It's another story, which mm. was in my book. Um, uh, oh, my God. I could. All of these things are connected. But the thing about the light... My friend Derek, when he had his experience, he was by the GCHQ and he was camping with um, like a works um, 
character building type exercise when they take you away for a few days and you've got to on with people that you don't normally get on with and make a bonfire and build a camp and all this sort of stuff they nice. were doing it next door to the ghq site and at the end of the evening he asked his instructor would it be okay if i just wandered off to this um, higher ground in by the in the fields and the woods above where they were this is right on the coast literally on the coast and he was the only one who wanted to go so he he decided i'll just go on my own anyway he went up there and he said as he was standing there this is by this by the side and with within the, i don't know five minutes ten minute walk of the boundary which is all security fence mm -hmm. and um he, he said that the lights, which is not unusual, it's normal, all the lights came on. This is like a summer evening about, well, I think, probably 10 o'clock at night because it, it doesn't get dark so early in the UK as it does here. I've noticed that. I mm. mean, we in the summer in England, from my memory anyway, from when I was young particularly, it could be 11 o'clock and it was still really quite light, you know. Mm. But anyway, all the light come and my friend Derek was just there for this you know like a business project thing really and he said it, it looks so pretty because of the way the lights were glowing and then he got his camera out and he took three pictures of the site this huge GCHQ site you can see it online you can find images of it massive satellite dishes and they're basically spying on everyone all around the world literally there's a whole chapter on that the the technical side of it in the second book or was it no the first book the cornish book okay and you can also find videos online where there's guys who have worked for the telecommunications industry who tell you i'm, I'm amazed it's still online to be honest absolutely amazed because they give you so much information wow so he took these pictures the next morning no he oh sorry i missed a bit he took the pictures he said he started feeling really peculiar like there was something around him hmm. and he got cold i think he got very cold he then noticed this lot which brings me back to the original point this big light like sort of i don't know six inch diameter or more hmm. in the woods above where he was and it was coming through the woods like it was coming down for him to look oh, for him. Oh, wow. Well, you know, this is, and it, there's nobody around there. I mean, it just isn't, it's just one of those very quiet areas. And it, it was moving quicker than any person could move through that terrain, you know? So he got, he got a bit scarce and he basically headed back to his mates on this um, course he was on. And I, I forget all the rest of it. It's all in the book anyway. But I wonder whether that was connected to... Okay, next morning... <laughs> I missed that bit. The next morning... Oh, he saw two, two jets. Two jets. Shortly after he took his picture, shortly after he started feeling strange, two jets flew over him. Now, remember, this is a very tiny peninsula, right? So these jets came from the north... I'm trying to remember which way they came. They came from the sea, so they're coming, and it's on the north coast, so they're coming from the direction of Wales. So they were probably scrambled in North Wales, because there's an RAF base there. And they they had been scrambled. So some, they have technology that can things. They know when they're there. These two jets came flying over within, I don't know how long it is, but maybe a few seconds or half a minute they would be over that peninsula from north to south of Cornwall because it's not very big it's not a big place I think it's it's roughly 100 miles long maybe 90 something and probably 30 or 50, maybe 50 at a most wide so you know how fast these jets go it would be over and across fast. the English Channel in, in no time yeah so he just saw the two jets. Next morning, he take this is in the nineties. I think it's the nineties. He puts his um, he uploads his images to his computer, 
and on the computer there is a UFO which he didn't see with his eyes wow that over GTHQ and basically he this, this just gets better and better his neighbor worked for GCHQ and he knew that and if you if you work there you sign the official secrets and you you don't tell anybody anything that you, you shouldn't you know right right so he he asked him <coughs> he asked him to come in and have a look at these pictures and just tell tell him what he what he could see and he he thought this guy would be surprised yeah, but he wasn't he wasn't at all surprised and they had a conversation obviously i didn't put, give his real name in the book um and he said that one of the questions he asked uh derek was were there two jets? one of the first things he asked him so was there was and, there and what said, you yeah. cut out there so he he said to my friend derek were there two jets oh two two aircraft two jets okay uh, mm -hmm. Eric obviously said yes, he, but he said, well, why do you ask? And he said, we always send two jets up. So wow. he knew that. He knew. And, and, and I'm hearing things. Yeah. I'm hearing things pattern. in the chat, too, that it says Cornwall. It, it, UFOs are no uh, stranger to Cornwall. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of oh, weird yeah. and wild things happening yeah. there. Do you think it has to do with ley lines or you know just the town itself the ground what do you think why why is there so many crazy um, things happening in cornwall uh well if you it's such a big question if you go down the fall the extreme west there's an area called penwith which is what my favorite part of cornwall because i've, I've got family there mm -hmm. and it's it's got all sorts of weird stuff going on it always has done and it draws in, I mean, it could, it, they've got granite everywhere. I mean, that's partly maybe something to do with it. I don't could know. Could be, Steve. But they, they you... attract people. Yeah, they, they attract creative people. Creative oh, people yeah. are, are just pulled down there. So you get all these amazing authors and uh, musicians. I mean, Don, if you, uh, um, he was there in St. Ives for a few years um ralph mctell um oh dear wiz jones then you've got all these uh, fantastic guitars you've got loads of authors um daphne de Morio, um i think just about everyone my mind's gone now but there's so many of them have worked there and well it sounds of, like this pool to go there it sounds like yeah. the same thing that draws creativity and artists and things like that might be drawing these things too the bigfoot the lights all of the oh. different ghosts of course the yeah, history maybe. there any place that maybe. there's so you know old and activity it's going to draw what do you think steve yeah, yeah. That's, that's what i think and then you have other strange things there too not too far away like you have the museum of witchcraft and magic is there and there then uh, uh, Pixie, yeah, uh, Pamela yeah. Coleman, that uh, yeah. drew the Rider Waite tarot deck that did all those original paintings. Mm -hmm. uh, she, uh -huh. I think she's buried somewhere secretly there in, in Bood. Is that how you say it? Oh, right. Bood? Yeah, I lived there. Yeah, yeah well, funny there you enough, you, you've, got it spot, you've, got, you've got it spot on, Steve. But <laughs> the locals, a lot of the old locals, Bood, like Bood. You like being yeah. a booed laddie boy? Do you like it? Yeah, you know, it's like, whereas me, I was Draw it out of the to me, it was, uh, to me, it was viewed, but I think you're, you're technically correct. I think really, um, yeah, yeah. Funny enough, you mentioned Pamela Coleman, who I know nothing about other than a friend of mine in viewed, who's a journalist. I haven't spoken to her for a year or two now. She's a journalist, and she wrote a book about Pamela Coleman. Um, Dawn. I'm trying to think of what her surname is. Um, yeah, Dawn. Da, 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 I can't think of it. It's Dawn. So if you Google that, Pamela Coleman Smith. Is that what you said? I think that's right. Yeah. She did the tarot cards? 
Yeah, she drew yeah. the the right wider yeah. wider yeah. right tarot deck. I yeah. get it right in a minute. That's pretty cool. Well, wider well, right tarot deck. Well, I'll tell you what. If you well, don't, we'll if you guys don't, if mm-hmm. you guys don't mind taking about a four minute <coughs> little break here today, I put through mm-hmm. a, a little video, and what I like to do, Steve and I do this all the time on Monday Madness, is I'll put together a little video. I'll go through and I'll try to get ghosts caught on CCTV. I love that. Who doesn't love? those videos where you've got like you know ghosts that are caught and you see the apparition and i try to get a lot of different ones because the thing is this uh mark when we all come together we're really all coming together just to, oh there you go pamela coleman smith there you go terror, terror artist. Artist. the pious that's pixie it, by dawn it. robinson yeah, is that the it. book there you go <laughs> yeah that's, that's it. beautiful I'd like to read that actually that's, that's beautiful oh yeah. she's a friend Oh, that's great. So, especially with people yeah, that have been yeah, experiencers. Yeah. And we can play it, and you can talk over it if you want. Um, I've done it in a couple where it repeats, and you can try to see it a little bit better for the chat. But we can go through and see them. There has been a couple that have really intrigued me. I thought it would be fun to bring them on tonight. So, we can all look at it and see, well, you know, do you think it's fake? Do you think it's fact? Do you think, is that the way a ghost looked when you saw it? So we're going to p- pop that up. We can talk over it, Mark, and just have fun with it. We can stop it. we we'll do whatever we want. Here we go. Okay. See what you think of this. This is one of my absolute favorites. <laughs> Poor John. Amy says no one's checked into that room, uh, and there's reports of screaming coming from that room. Amy, he's on his way down there right now. What's going on, John? Yeah, just wait, John. Just wait, John. Don't go. I would wait for the police, John. John, for the love of God. (laughs) Amy, John's uh, going to enter the room real quick just to make sure, uh, see what's going on. Wait one. Did you see it? There it goes. That's what you see now for. Down the hall. Okay, Amy, John wants you to call the police right now, if you don't mind. Uh, he says no one's in there, uh, but that all of the furniture has been turned upside down, and the, and the, hold on. He says the carpet's been ripped up and that the shower is on, but nobody's in there. Man, that's, that's scary. I'm uh, officially freaked out now. There it goes. Look at that. Look at that. Now, what do you guys think of that one? Well, that's frightening, and I, I feel bad for John. He looks like he's a pretty big guy, and he comes tearing out there looking back behind him like, John, don't go in the door. What are you doing? What are you doing? But you hear screams coming out yeah. of this room, right? Yeah, and he, yeah. there's no, yeah. supposedly nobody yeah. is supposed to have rented it. He goes in. The shower's on. The carpet is ripped up. The furniture's thrown over. A couple people in chat say that it was supposedly f- f- uh, faked. It was on Slap Tam and a couple of... I've seen this one out for a couple of years i think it was 2008 i think it said um and it was just a, an absolute trip to me i don't know if it was promotional like uh even Mar- if it's, Mar- fake, it's well done it's, it it's is convincing. well done <laughs> yeah that's what do you think that's Mark? what i was thinking it's superb 
I love it. It's I, superb. I've seen it before. <coughs> right. And I, I think it's superb. I mean, I don't know if it's real. I would. Uh -huh. It's got it's everything. Possible. It's possible, isn't it? It's possible. Yeah, it is. That's what we say. We don't yeah, know. Think, because, I, you know, you could take we, 10 we of these off, and. But, yeah, and nine yeah. of them could be fake, but that one that's real means something's yeah. out there and somebody's mm. catching, you know? And like yeah. I said, it could be a promotional for yeah. a game. It could be, you mm. know, uh, anything. Yeah. But my goodness, John, you know, yeah. he's got uh, mad yeah. props from me. Here's yeah. the next one, guys. John was the one that made up the rumor that it was for promotion for a game. There you go. <laughs> Let's go for a drag. I love this one. I don't know if you've ever seen it. But man, again, if it's fake, they did a great job of this. Now here you're going to see another close-up of the whole thing. There you go, Donnie. I'm with you, honey. It is brilliantly done. Look at this. Now he looks like he's just minding his own business, and then all of a sudden, wa-pow! The foot goes up. And he's drug. I don't see any way unless he was being pulled by a string or uh, somebody in a green suit or something like that, how he could get that drag. I don't know. What do you guys think? No, that's creepy looking. And he Can I watch it again? Takes <laughs> I'd have to watch it again. <laughs> it was a trip, right? Hang on one second here. What am I doing? All right. You want to see it again? Let's see here. Let's see that drag again. Here it comes. He's mm. walking down the hall. Here he comes. Now you see him just strutting. All of a sudden, it's just something appears in front of him. The thing that gets me is look at his shadow on the wall and look at the shadow of the other thing. He's got a shadow, too. The ghost has a shadow, too. Mm. Do you see it? You see two distinct yeah. shadows on the wall. Mm. That's what got me. If it was just a CGI. His, um... Okay. His, you see what his I'm saying? His foot disappears when he when he falls to the ground. When he falls to the ground, his his legs up, right? His foot is absorbed by whatever it is. Oh wow! Absorbed I didn't notice that. Let's the, see. Yeah. If you, yeah. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. And it was absorbed to it. Oh wow! I didn't notice that. No. Okay. Late. No, late no, for no. class. When he's, when he's down, it, you you missed the bit there. Okay. Hold on. Let's see. When he's down. All right, let's hit it. Yeah, if you go back to the, the beginning. When just like leave leave it now. Okay. I mean it's just what what I can see, but when he's down on the ground his legs fly up, don't they? You look at his Yeah, right I see leg. that there. No, it kinda of disappears into that cloud or mist or whatever it is there. Yes. Yeah, yeah, there. Just well, it's still there there, but now it's almost yeah. Isn't that a trip? It. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what about it. Yeah. Oh, it almost did kind of disappear a little bit, like it was absorbed into the black mist. That's a trip right there. Yeah. That is a trip. And if it is fake, they would have to have something holding his leg up like that. I don't think you could extend your leg and put it that yeah. far up. Yeah, the shadows got me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here's this next one. A lot of people yeah. say this is fake. Again, I don't know how you could do this one. I call it late for class. Now watch this one. Transient portal, possible. Yeah, that's true, Roseworthy. I'm surprised at that, too. Yeah, they didn't follow up with the damage room. Now, the thing that gets me is everybody in here knows that sign's going to get it. You know, I mean, if I was a ghost, I'd kick the sign, too. The wet sign, wet floor. <laughs> but that's but, hard um, to fake. Here it comes. That... Can I just say that that banging sound? I'll tell i tell you a story about that in a minute. All right, go ahead. Go ahead, and I'll save the last one. You got a story for the banging sound? Wire work? Yeah, it could be done. Well, yeah, but it's like okay. It's, it's it'll take a few minutes, but I uh, if anyone here is from America, apart from yourselves, so I'm sure you'll know. You'll know of a place called Eureka Springs. In Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Have you been there? I've not been, been there, but Steve? I've heard of it. 
I, I don't think I've, I've been so, to Arkansas, but I don't think I've been to Eureka Springs. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a really beautiful town. It's like very heavily wooded. It's more or less covered in woods, really, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a hotel that's really high up above it called the Crescent Hotel. And it's got a massive Jesus uh, statue some distance away. They have a sort of two main landmarks. Um, you have to sort of drive quite a long way to, to, to even get to it. You know, you need to, if you want to go there, you, you don't just pass through it. You, you, you want to go there. So I've been there like probably five times in the time I've been here I, in the last few years. And, um, sorry, excuse me, no, she knows. <laughs> and we normally go to the Crescent, which is well known for being haunted. I mean, that's got loads of stories. And at the Crescent, we've never had any experiences at all. Um, we've stayed in various other places around the town. Years ago, I think it was about 2019. Now, this is interesting. Can I, can I show you a... I'll show you this photo. It's important. This is... I'll show it to you in a minute. So, we went to a hotel called... Uh, I'm trying to top my head. The Grand Central Hotel. I sent you an image, Cisco, earlier. I'm not sure if you've got it there. Oh, I don't. The Grand I'm sorry. Central Hotel. Oh, right. Okay. Um, it's it's a 18... I think it's the 1880s or something it was built. And we we stayed there. Now, the hotel was built in, eight, in the 80s, but it burnt down very quickly afterwards. I'm not sure if anyone was killed or not. I don't know. They don't, I couldn't find anything online. But the place burnt down and they rebuilt it. And it's still, you know, it's still open for business now. And they, they use it. Um, the last time it was restored was the 1980s, the 86. And it's... But it's sort of based, the whole thing is like 1880s sort of um, decor. You know, it's, it's going for that feel. So it's very old fashioned inside, really old fashioned. And um, it's full of Eng English antiques. They import, they've imported them. Um, and it knows about attachments. I think there's a possibility that some of those, if not all, they've got attachments mm. possibly, I don't know. So we didn't know we didn't we didn't know any of this, and we stayed there. So this is myself and Janice, and we we sort of settled ourselves in, and we went up the town to a, a ghost tour uh, at the uh, I'm trying to think of the name of it, the Basin Park. So you've got three big hotels there. You've got the Crescent, which is the, the one that everyone knows, the one that ghost adventures like to go to. All these sort of people they go there. Then you've got the Basin Park, which is also very, very haunted. So we were at the Basin Park as um, guests on a ghost tour. And when we were there, the guy that was doing this ghost tour, he reminded everybody, he said, when you leave this ghost tour, cleanse yourself, you know, say a little prayer or oh, do wow. the... Yeah, we do the thing where you get your arm and you sort of, you know... I'm sure anyone watching knows all that stuff. And you're supposed to cleanse yourself for protection so that you don't take anything with you when you leave. And we sort of noted what he said, but stupidly forgot to do it. So I don't know if that's relevant, but we'd, we uh -oh. forgot. And this was like about half past 10 at night. And we, I was desperate for a beer and really dry been and there. It, there there wasn't a bar yeah there wasn't a bit there wasn't a bar there so we went this is, this is really quite embarrassing to say but this is what happened we went up the town up this main street we didn't go back to the hotel we were staying in which is where the incident happened later we went up the town just looking for a bar any bar just uh, just a quick pint and then go home go back to the hotel and we, there's some um, concrete steps, which are multicolored, um, sort of higher up the high street. I think they call it Main Street or High Street. Uh, went up these steps, and there's a pub or bar, whatever you call it, in the, on the left. So I go in there, and as I say, I'm thirsty. And I very politely asked a beer and a drink for my uh, Janice. 
and they basically they they were all smoking weed or something in there i don't think janice thinks they just didn't want us in there because we were outsiders they didn't know who we were and they wanted to keep it all sort of private you know mm -hmm. but they they were very aggressive i, I asked them you know it was very polite for a beer and they said oh have you got any id on you well i'm at the time i was like 58 59 and now <laughs> When you're in e when, when when you're in England when you're in England like I'm serious you don't need you don't need ID to get a beer you you just don't um, it's like and to me that was always just one of those things that really won't, won't the one thing one of the two things this is most most things about America I love but that's one thing I just can't abide but obviously they have to go with the rules that they've got you know I accept that. So he, he said, oh, you've got your ID. And I didn't have any with me. And I said, look, I'm sorry, I haven't got any with me. You know, I just want a beer and then we'll go. Uh, oh, well, you must have ID. So I said, well, can I speak to your manager? Because I knew there were no other bars. Well, I didn't think there were. So the manager comes out and I asked him very politely. I said, yeah, you know, I, know, I haven't got any ID, but I'd like a pint. He was equally like, no, just very sort of aggressive like verbally should we say but not not rude or anything just aggressive and this isn't like me this is my point why it's a bit embarrassing normally in that situation would have just accepted it, said okay fair enough <laughs> your loss you know take my money elsewhere mm -hmm. but something made me a different person so I normally am, and, I, and I've experienced this a few times in my life. And it, I think some spirits can sort of mask people. They can mm -hmm. sort of take over the personality, sort of temporarily. Jumpers. Um, but you don't know it's going on. Yeah, you just don't mm -hmm. know it's going on. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I, Janice said I was unbelievable because she'd never seen me. Like, and I was like... <laughs> <laughs> Tell it like, like, like the beer. I was sort of like there were six or seven of them, all big guys, and there's men in there saying, "Well, you know, I would treat you better if if you were in England. I wouldn't treat you like this. I would get you a beer. I would do blah 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 blah." You know, and she's trying to drag me out, <laughs> and I was I was up for it, which is not me at all. I was really up for it, and I was I was uh -oh. like. All of a sudden, I had this different party, like very aggressive. I was, you know, going back. You got jumped. And I think so. And they were all sort of staring at me like, who is this guy? They weren't laughing. They, they were taking me very seriously. They, and they, as I say, it's not me. It's not me at all. And anyway, so I did leave because Janice was like a bit worried. So we left. Now... We went back to the hotel now because we remembered there was a bar in the hotel we were staying in, which was the Grand Central. Now, we had asked the lady earlier, the, the lady who owned it was a Welsh lady, like an elderly lady. And the first thing we always ask in these hotels is, have you got any ghosts? You know, we like to know. And she told us, she said, oh, we used to have some. She, she, she actually said five or six, I think. She said, we used to have five or six, whatever it was. But she said, we cleansed the place. Well, as soon as she said that, we, we both just laughed because I don't think you can. I honestly don't think you can because I, I think they will do what they will do, personally. And mm -hmm. some, somebody waving holy water, you know, chucking holy water on them or showing them a cross or something. It's only going to work for so long, I think, you know. So we went, we went back in and there was a bar open in the corner of a hotel in the dark underneath. So we get chatting to these people and they're really lovely. And there's some guests in there having a wonderful time, just having a few drinks, chat at ghosts and stuff. Uh, two, two young girls came back from the town. They were probably in their early 20s staying at the hotel. They were drunk and they were knocking stuff over as they came through the door. And the old lady went and helped them get up the stairs, which was quite funny. 
she, I mean, she was really sweet. And we stayed up a bit longer with these people chatting to them. Then we went to bed. And I could, I, you know, if you look at Grand Central online, you can, you can see the, you know, there's videos and stuff. You can see the inside of it. Um, we went in the room and the, the door of it is a small, small room. And under the door, there was quite a big gap, an unnaturally big gap, really. So you could see movement outside. If anyone walked by, you could see them. You sort of see the shadow moving. Anyway, we tried to sleep. And this was by now about half past 12. And we were just getting off to sleep. And there was a hell of a commotion, like really, really loud. The banging that you heard earlier with those files. Yes. It was like that. It was really, really loud. I mean, really loud. It wasn't just like a little knocking. It wasn't water hammer. It was, mm -hmm. and it just kept going. And then we heard this conversation, which we thought was next door. A man talking to a woman. But we okay. couldn't hear the words. We just heard this conversation, which seemed to go round in circles, like it would stop. Then there would be peace. The, the bang, then the banging would start. Then the banging would stop. And Janice kept saying to me, can you go downstairs and complain at pressure and just say, you know, there's a lot of noise going on, we can't sleep or whatever. And I said, oh, it'll stop soon. Don't worry about it. It'll stop. And it would stop. But then 10 minutes later, it started again. And it was absolutely crazy. It was like so loud. It was like somebody was working above us. <clears throat> um, like with a new, like I don't know with a drill or something it was so loud those cabinets said, were banging them. pretty loud <clears throat> they were banging yeah, yeah, pretty loud and I can't similar. imagine that at yeah. like 12 yeah. or 2 o'clock in the morning it, I can't imagine yeah well it went on and Janice will tell you this if you ever speak to her she eventually got off to sleep the last time I heard the noise was about 6 o'clock in the morning I never got any sleep literally no wow. sleep at all so I, I went down to reception in the morning and I, I was not very happy. But I mean, I wasn't going to moan at them. I was just going to say, you know, what was all that noise and did right, anyone right. else complain? And when I told the receptionist, what noise? No, I've not heard anything. And, and I think she was genuine. I think she was genuine. Yeah. <laughs> they love your mustache. You, they love Tony. your mustache. Yeah. I, so nobody I, else I, I had heard. Might be taking the mickey, slightly. <laughs> but nobody no, else no, no, heard nobody, it, nobody or nobody else heard. That's crazy. No, no. Wow. It was. That's um... that's crazy, Mark. But no, I but think I, you I, should have cleansed yourself yeah. when you left, because, like I said, I and I and you said something else that sometimes yeah. it only stays for so long. I think when you do a cleansing like that too it's also has to do with your intent and what you put behind it because um i've seen it last a yeah. good long time but there are some things you need to do and i think keep up as a maintenance as well you know what i mean but if you give me give me one more minute i've got one more video to play for you guys i think this one's going to knock your socks mm -hmm. off it's called footprints look at this this one i love i don't care if it's real or not it's in a restaurant, and one of the patrons comes out and hears footsteps and takes a video. You can hear the restaurant behind. Okay, here comes another set. What in the hell is that? Whoa, what do you think, chat? Boo! How about that one? Yeah. What in the world? Did you see the foots? Co did you see the feet coming yeah. down the stairs? And then it turns yeah, and it's like yeah. a shadow. 
of a full being and then the next set comes down and there's nothing and you hear the boards creaking as the the, the it's almost like uh, hard heeled shoes what do you what do you think mark uh i i don't i don't know to be honest i i could go either way on it i mean there's so so many clever people with uh, effects mm -hmm. I, I, so true maybe you know so true but it's a goodie so, i love it i don't know i mean i think the trouble is nowadays you know you can make these you know and and so anything doesn't matter how genuine it is mm -hmm. there's always going to be someone who says it's fake that's true you know, even, that's you true know, we we've we've experienced things i mean i've experienced things which i know mm -hmm. weren't fake but if, right, I, right. if those if those experiences were on film, which they're not, somebody would say, "Oh, it's fake." Good point. You you it's know, so true. I don't know. I don't it's know. so true. That's why yeah. I like to watch these and enjoy them. And I always walk away with the yeah. "What if? What if?" Because again, like you just said, mm -hmm. I have pictures that I've shown people that I knew I took myself, and I didn't do anything—a filter or set a prop or anything yeah, yeah. like that. And I guarantee people yeah. would think it was fake. But the feeling yeah. you get when you catch something like that is overwhelming because you're like, "Oh my mm -hmm. God, I caught something!" Yeah, yeah. We got a little EVP yeah. from what sounded like two little girls answering a direct question in time. You know, I asked them, "Do you feel stuck here?" And one said, "No." no like two different people look into each other go no not really and it was obviously yeah, a yeah. young voice you could tell they were two different people it was amazing just those two words and we were just overwhelmed actually my son caught it, it was his first evp and it's just so overwhelming that's why i like looking at these what do you think about that one steve have you ever seen that one before oh you're you're muted you're muted There, there you go. go. Um, I I like it even if it's fake. It's still I know. fun to watch. I've never seen that one before, but uh, the shoes yeah, coming yeah, down when they're no. coming down, there's nothing else there. <laughs> and yeah. after they turn, did everybody catch that? Patriot yeah, said he, 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 he lost it. Yeah. But man, that was a trip. Let's just watch that last part again, one more time. Just the feet coming down the stairs is worth it. If nothing else, for the sake of Halloween, let's watch this one one more time, and. <laughs> At the end, I mistakenly cut it off, and I apologize for that. The man taking the video sounds like an older gentleman. Um, again, it was stated in the beginning, and I didn't play that part, that they were eating dinner. It's a restaurant. You can hear the silverware and the, the servers and the bussers and stuff in the background, right? But if you listen carefully, you hear the steps starting, and that's why he stopped. And he pulled out his camera like they say you're supposed to do. And uh, he was on the way to the bathroom, and he heard these stairs. There was a winding stairs that went up so he could see there was nobody from top to bottom coming down these stairs but he heard the footprint of the footsteps <clears throat> so he pulls out his camera and he starts recording and that's where you see it and at the very end you hear he, he, he had sedated it was his wife so that's how i know come up behind and says what are you doing he goes uh, uh i think i just saw a ghost <laughs> and the way he says it it's amazing so one more time just for halloween's sake let's watch these steps again it's amazing to me like you like steve said fake or no i love it let's get it big Second one is a much bigger hurry. <laughs> Incredible. Boo, indeed. 
That's incredible to me. And you know what's extra? And my mm. chat appreciates this too, I'm sure. Is the silverware and the busters in the background. It sounds like chains. It makes it great. It sounds like they're <laughs> dragging ghostly chains yeah. through the whole thing. I love it. I love it so much. The second one, Paradox said the second one sounds like female footsteps. You know, it does. I think it's because it could have been hard souls. And you know what, Mark? It also reminded mm. me, I, we've almost done an hour and a half here. So I wanted to get this story out of you. When you and I uh, and Steve talked years ago, you had mentioned um, a little something that happened to you, and you called it a walk-by. And I thought that was so neat. Do you remember yeah. that story? Mm -hmm. Was it somebody famous that had a walk-by yeah. with you? Uh, um, no. no. no, Nobody famous. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, I thought yeah, it had something to do with of, yeah, with Henry the Eighth, or it was around the Henry the yeah, Eighth. Uh... That's right. Yeah, but it was. It, yeah, that's a nice story. Uh, this is happened. The walk by thing is basically. I've had this happen a few times. I had it happen in Surbiton. Um, anyone in England would know where that was. It's um, over London, and that was the first time it happened to me. The first time it knowing knowingly happened to me was I was walking home from college, I was at Kingston Tech, and there was a crowd of people all over the place, Friday night, people going home, heading towards the station and heading away from the station. So lots of people about. I was with two mates, walking up through this sort of busy pathway, um, opposite the station, which is like an Art Deco 1930s lovely station. And as I'm getting close to it, I see this guy, he was, on distance to what be be about uh, two foot maybe like that. He he's very tall. Now I'm six foot one and a half. He was taller than me. He was probably six four, six five, something like that. And he was very very skinny, with a suit on, bowler hat, um, like they used to wear in the old days. Um, he was just stri a bit like if anyone saw the John Cleese. Um, Ministry of Silly Walks mm -hmm. many years ago. I don't know if anyone's old enough to remember that. He looked a little bit like that. And he was walking towards me. Now, because he looked so unusual, and I think this is part of what they do, right? I think these people who do these ghosts, where well, they are, they attract your attention. They, mm -hmm. they, in a crowd, they know who can see them. I think they know. Yes. I don't know how yes. they know. Mm -hmm. So they attract your attention. So mm -hmm. you look at them. You naturally look at them because you're curious. You just think they're a strange look person. When you see these things, when I've seen them myself so many times, it's like they're a real person, but they're just a bit weird, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm staring at this guy, and he's staring at me, and he's grinning. He's just grinning like a silly smile. He's walking towards me. He's getting closer and closer. And weaving his way for all these people. As I say, he's head and shoulders above most of the people. And as he comes past me, he sort of leers down at me in a sort of smarmy smile. And he's sort of, yeah, just really peculiar. And I looked behind me to see, because I couldn't quite believe how crazy this guy was, you know. So I looked behind me to watch him walk away. And he wasn't there. And... I looked everywhere to see. Now, it was busy. There's a lot of people about. But this guy was tall. Taller than most people. Probably everyone there, apart from, including me, you know. So he couldn't have hidden. He'd get in a car. There was a road there. He didn't get in a parked car. There was a little park on the other side with a, a miniature wall and some hedging. There was nowhere that... He, you know, I looked in the park. I went back and looked everywhere but I could and my two mates who had sort of gone ahead they never saw this guy I asked them later they had got to the main road just where you could go over to the station and they were waiting for me because we were sort of quite late for the train to go back to Woking and they were standing and I, I sort of looked around and they're looking at me like why <laughs> they were wondering why I was sort of dawdling in this one spot and looking all around me they couldn't figure it out and they they shouted out to me 
you know, what the hell are you doing or something similar. Mm -hmm. And that was it, train. We did catch it. And I, they asked me what was going on, and I told them, because they just laughed. Because, you know, a lot of people haven't. They think it's funny. And I can understand that. Um, so that was my first one. I had another one in a coal mine. Um, it was in uh, Woodhorn in nor the northeast of England. And that's connected to the other story that you... Uh, I'll tell you about one in a minute. Um, so the coal mine one was... The, the lay we, we knew this couple. We were... So there's, when, when I lived in the northeast of England, I lived in a place of Prudder, or the locals call it Prudder, uh, which means it's French for proud heights, that's where it comes from. And there's a castle there, it's a Norman castle. Basically, I lived with the guy that was the custodian, the English heritage custodian and his wife were friends of mine. They had three youngsters, I had three youngsters at the time, and we used to get together with them, and they would show us parts of the castle, or castle, as they would say, the Northerners. <laughs> they, they would show us around to places that weren't open to the public and so on. And I, I tell you, I tell you the VIII look-alike, because I'm stressing it, I don't think it was Henry VIII, but it could have been, who knows? But, so they, they, they lived in the castle, they lived Waters Castle. Their kids, their youngsters at the time, had seen um, people in weird costumes, shall we say. They, they, that's how they described them, you know. Now, the night, the, the story that you're probably thinking of, we were around there for dinner one night after he'd finished working. So Howard and Deborah at that time both worked in the castle. They, they lived there. They ran the place, you know, for English heritage. And we went around there for dinner, like with our three kids and their three kids. Massive, massive quarters that they had. Very high ceilings. and But it was a more modern part of the castle that they lived in. Probably only like 200 years old, maybe, something like that. But the rest of only it was Only 200, Norman, Steve. You know, like a yeah. thousand or whatever <laughs> that is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, um, anyways, my friend Howard, we'd, we'd all, I think we'd all had dinner, and I was in this big old kitchen that he had, and I'm just chatting to him, and he's sorting out these documents, uh, like uh, publicity things for some, or something, something going on, and he was sorting it all out for the next day to take them down to put on display on the table where the public come in. And his job was to sort of show people around and teach them some history if they were, you know. So he had a, he said to me, Mark, would you do us a favour and take these downstairs? And he, you'd have to know the layout of a castle, but basically when you came through the main doors as, as a paying guest, which I didn't, I came through the, you know, through his quarters because I was, I was a friend of his. But you came through these big doors, and then on the left there was this big room with all these pictures of the castle, all the history. You know the sort of thing you get in these castles. Mm -hmm. And he wanted me to go down to that room. And I think I was taking documents down and putting them down there. I think that's why I was taking them down. It's so long ago. It's the 90s, this was. So the way I normally go would be sort of straight out the door, along a corridor, down a staircase and come out more or less on top of this room, you know, just turn right and I'm there. But I couldn't go that way because he'd locked up. You know, that was part of his job, the security. So he'd lock everything up and basically said, look, Mark, you can't go the normal way. And he told me how to get down there. There's another way, which meant that I had to go along this uh, long corridor up at the level we were at, which was, I don't know what it would be, sec second floor, suppose. along this long corridor to the second set of stairs further on, which weren't used and I'd never been on before. So I get to the end, and as I get to the end, it's like um, the stairs go, I'm trying to picture it, from the top, they go down to like a halfway level, and there's like a platform. It's all concrete. 
with steel bars at the side, you know. Um, what do they call it? Handrail. So there's a platform halfway down, and then the stairs go down again. I'm trying to think whether they were at an angle or not, but it, but it, it was a platform in the middle anyway. I was at the top of the stairs when I heard footsteps coming towards me down the stairs. Not on the stairs, but on that level down there. And it was echoing like somebody was walking towards me. Sort of bang, 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 sort of, you know. Mm -hmm. Echoey. Foot, definitely footsteps. And I start thinking, well, that's strange, because I know that everybody who's in that hustle was in that domestic unit that they lived in. That was my three kids, his three kids, my wife at the time, and his wife at the time, and him. So there shouldn't have been anyone there. So I start walking down, slowly walking down the top half of these steps, and the steps are getting closer and closer. I then see this guy come out from directly opposite me, from the level below me, a big man. I mean, really big man. He was, mm -hmm. I mean, I, d I wasn't at the same level as him, so I can only guess what height he was. But I would say he was, he was as tall as me, but he was a lot wider. You know, we're talking, mm. um, I don't know, he was, he was fat. I'll be honest, he was fat. But <laughs> sort of powerful fat. You know, some people is, just, He's fat. <laughs> just some people are fat and they're not yeah but he was he was like a yeah, strong looking a strong looking man he's a big dude yeah he's, he was a strong looking man yeah he, he was like naturally big you know he wasn't mm -hmm. like floppy and flabby just big and he was dressed like and this is this is i know it sounds crazy he was dressed like all the pictures i'd ever seen of henry the eighth mm -hmm. right so he had i mean i don't know what the names of the the, the costumes are but it was like right. a waistcoat with lots of buttons and the hat with and the feather and the gold colors. and emerald greens yeah and i can't all that. i can't remember that yeah, the I brocade the hat to be honest but he might have done but yeah i remember the tunic and i remember the trousers i remember the shoes really but mm. oh wow sort of clip flopping through because he was big man so my, my throat is killing me hang on <laughs> sorry it's okay <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. It's okay. Uh, you'd think I smoked my dog. I'm so thirsty tonight. I've drank <laughs> almost two bottles of water. I don't know what so, it is. Everything is salty no, air. I've got a really sore throat. I'm not used to talking so much. Honestly, I'm not. <laughs> I, I don't talk much most days. Most we've, days I just well, talk we, to Well, we've been going. We've been going a while. So it's you come by it honest. <laughs> You've come by it yeah. honest. It's totally um, all right. So, yeah. So anyway, he, he, he he's, he's walking underneath me. And again, this walk by thing, I had a full, he had, he was a full person. He was a full body, you know. He full was body the, he apparition. Was man, he wasn't see through. And my, he wasn't see through. Yeah. Translucent. No, not, no, not at all. Not at all. And he had a Solid. face. He had a face. There was nothing wrong with him. He looked normal. It's just that he was dressed up. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, he walked down below me and I'm above him. By now, I'm sort of standing just watching. He, I, he saw, I mean, I saw his eyes. He was looking directly at me. I was looking directly at him. And I said something stupid like, all right, mate, or something. I can't remember now. Which is like you know, a typical greeting between two mm -hmm. strange blokes. Do you know what I mean? You just do mm -hmm. it. It's just polite. And he just blanked me. He sort of, he sort of gave me a glare. <laughs> and he blanked me. And he mm -hmm. walked away underneath. You've got this is down below me. He walked over to my right, his left, and headed out towards a door, which I couldn't see him because it was under the, the the level that I just walked on was like a like a suspended floor, if you like. Mm -hmm. So he, I couldn't see him once he went past me, underneath me. There was a point where he just went out my eye shot, mm -hmm. and my first thoughts were that he was some uh, reenactor who okay. English Heritage do employ mm -hmm. from time to time, or they did. And he was just doing that for the customers during the day. And I thought, oh, he must be spending the night, and he's still in costume, or he's trying it on or something. I was thinking all these different things. And I walked through to the place I'm going to, which was quite bottom stairs over to the right, opened the doors, put the leaflets down, came out and walked back up, no sign of him or anything, just went back. 
And it, it got funny because when I got back to the kitchen, I kept it quiet for a while, cause I, but it, it was bugging me. So I couldn't figure it out. And I forget the exact conversation, but basically I was asking Howard, my friend, and if you knew him, <laughs> you would understand why it's quite funny. He's, um, uh, I'll explain. So I'm, I'm, I kept saying to him while he was busy, and we were just standing there chatting, kept saying, oh, have you got any reenactors working at the castle this weekend or whenever, you know? And he goes, mm-hmm. no. Oh, okay. <laughs> so um, is there any, uh, have you got any workmen that like dressing up? You know, right. I can't remember the exact conversation. And I'm not mm-hmm. actually spitting out what I've seen because I'm sort of trying to find out, are there some, is there somebody else staying here, you know? But he, he sort of said to me, well, why are you asking all these questions? And I, and mm-hmm. I said, well, I've just seen a, a guy downstairs and I described how he looked. And he, he sort of stopped what he was doing and sort of stared at me like, are you nuts sort of thing? He didn't say that, but I can see. He's like, he couldn't yeah. figure it out. So, and, and it basically, he said to me, well, what did he look like? And by I actually, wife, it was his wife who said to me, she came into the kitchen. Howard said to her, says, he was from, um, you were, we swear, American, but if you were English, he was from Derby, he was from Glossop. And he had a very strong, I don't know what they would call it, not Norman, it's not Southern, it's sort of in the middle somewhere. And he sort of said, um, Mark, I can't even do it myself now. Mark says he's just seen somebody downstairs. And of course, that's their job, their security. They don't want anyone in there who shouldn't be there. Right. So it's very worrying for him. Mm-hmm. And um, Deborah walks into the kitchen and she says, and I knew I could see this coming because I knew how ridiculous it sounded. Mm-hmm. And Deborah said, what did he look like? And I just I just told the truth because it was, what did mm-hmm. he look like? Well, he looked like Henry like VIII. Henry VIII. You know, uh-huh. and and I laughed. I did laugh because it was funny, but it was true as well. I did see him. I, I did see a person who looked like him. Who looked so like him? When I, yeah, when I did the research on it after the event, I mean years after the event, I basically found out that you know I looked at the costumes that men wore in those days, and the upper mm-hmm. classes did, you know, they they aped their masters. If you know, they, they dressed like, like to, him wear the same posh gear, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh-huh. And it was quite normal. And I looked at who who would look like him. Well, obviously, his father, other, and I looked into all this stuff. And I looked into who had been to Brunner Castle in, in history, you know, who had been there in, in those days. Mm-hmm. And it turned out that the guy that was in charge of, that area in the northeast, if you imagine, it, they were like gangs in those days, weren't they? Like upper class gangs. Mm-hmm. He was a guy called Percy, Henry Percy, who's famous. Henry Percy. Henry Percy looked a bit like Henry VIII. Wow. And, you know, they dressed the same. It was the same era. And the other thing was that um, his. His his lady, Henry per- I think it was Henry Percy, I'd have to check that. Henry Percy's lady was, uh, oh, I, I should have, a, have my notes here because I, I checked all this out. She was the one that Henry VIII basically stole from him. Because, uh, again, that went on in those days. You know, if you were, mm-hmm. you just got first dibs, as we call it. You know what I mean? So, yep, yep, yep. So, basically, that may may explain why... He may have gone there. He may have gone there and he may have noticed this, you know, beautiful lady that he took a fancy to. Who knows? Right. Um, right. So that would. But, but That's in history, the neatest folks, thing. No when you, going there, so. when you yeah. can have an experience and I'm so sorry for the technical stuff tonight, but we made it through. Um, when you can have an experience like that and then look back through history and see that that person went there, mm-hmm. frequented that place, and you see them, that you get yeah. that after the fact, it ver- validates the experience mm-hmm. so much more because you didn't know yeah. before. Yeah. You wouldn't well, think about seeing well, we somebody like that. that. Yeah. No, I, I need to reinforce, I, he did, as far as we know, according to the history books, there is no record of him going there. There is no record. Mm-hmm. But 
there is a rep. We do know that the bloke who run the castle in Pridda, Henry, I think it's Henry Percy, is the Percy family anyway. He did his his lady. I don't know whether it was his wife or girlfriend or whatever. She did get taken off to London to marry, or you know, I think it was. I'd have to look at my history, but I think it was uh, the first one because there's the divorced, beheaded. Died, there's so many of those, beheaded, yeah. Survived, yeah. You know? But that was yeah. his six wives. So it's div divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, yeah. <laughs> beheaded, survived. Henry the Eighth. Henry the Eighth left a sure legacy was, like no other. He certainly did. Yeah. That's crazy. They divorced, beheaded, survived. Yeah. You know, that's that's nuts. Yeah, but yeah. that's those are incredible stories. Yeah. And the books, guys, are um, name them off again for me, Mark. They are Wyatt's Weird uh, World. The first one, yeah. First one is yeah, Wyatt's Weird World. I've just reissued as a paperback, which Good. is basically all the crazy stuff from like when I was a toddler. <laughs> and there's, some, and there's a lot a lot of history in there there's a lot of history wrapped into all of it mm -hmm. um right up until probably about 2015 um there's other stuff in my the books that followed were about cornwall i was living there at the time and i'm fascinated by the place always have been oh yeah um, a so lot of a people lot are of history yeah and and those things are not there's a few of my own experiences but most of them are other people's well, that's what I think that's um, another thing that's important because yeah. Steve, um, that's how Steve got started too, just making sure that he got down uh, other people's stories and you did the same. And I think it's wonderful because we've got his yeah. wonderful books. We've got Mark's wonderful books. Steve, do you want to name off some of the ones you've got coming out now? Yours are going hot off the, oh, like, yeah, the like pancakes, the man. Last two went straight to the bestseller list. Um that's fantastic. Grab them here. Uh, first one was National Park Mysteries and Disappearances, Book One: The Great Smoky Mountains. And there you go. Number two is National Park uh -huh. Mysteries and Disappearances, uh, California. Got uh, Yosemite, Joshua Tree, cool. and Mount Shasta in there. And then Volume Three: The Pacific Northwest, which includes Oregon, Washington, and Idaho, will be out mid-December. Fantastic. With all this wonderful yeah, talent good. here, chat, I mean, you've got wonderful stories. You can look up and look at the history on Cornwall. And Mark, we can't thank you enough for just popping in here last minute and yeah, spending this you. night with us. It's been a hot us. minute since we talked. Well, it has, and it? it's been years, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's been yeah. four yeah. years or so. Yeah, yes, at so. least. Anyway, Mark's I'm, also I'm very, I'm a very, fantastic. I'm honored to be on the same year. He's all, oh, thank you. And he's also a wonderful musician. And, um, you know, we don't get those anymore because you're not on the, um, on the Facebook. You don't have a YouTube I, channel, I, do you? I, 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 I know it's easy to say that, but I'm sort of amateurish, really. I, oh, but I you have a good time. Really quite well. That's awesome. Yeah, I, you I, have I, a good I, time. I picking, guitar picking. <laughs> a lot of us do that listen it's been wonderful tonight the chat absolutely loved you there's been a lot about uh some personal experiences in the chat that they had a lot of people want to go and see the ghost of abraham lincoln they're talking about meeting famous people and elvis and stuff like that i don't know um if i'd want to meet somebody famous i still love that uh one where um i think it was uh Oh, who was it that came out and saw Lincoln, uh, Steve? It, I always want to say it's Churchill, but it was was it Churchill? I I believe it was. He was staying in the oh, Lincoln the, bedroom, and uh, yes, I think it was. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. he comes yeah. out. He yeah. Churchill used to love to take uh, a so, bath, you know, bath and walk around naked, kind of like uh, Ben Franklin, right? So he's the only wearing nothing but a cigar. He comes out and he sees Abraham Lincoln standing at the fireplace and he says, Mr. President, I believe you have me at a disadvantage. And I just think that's wonderful. I love stories like that. I love your stories, Mark. And uh, I've, got, I've Steve, got one for you. I've got one to leave you with, man. You got one to leave us with? Okay, go ahead. You got a few minutes. Hit us. Story? Yeah, it, it, you just... You've just reminded me by what you said about famous people and having great lines. This in in my home, in Surrey, Roger Moore 
You know Roger Moore? It was James yes. Bond. Mm -hmm. The yes. Saint. Do you know Roger Moore? Yeah. Yes. Roger Moore stayed at the Angel Hotel in Guildford. Very old um, stake. And allegedly, during the night, a sort of 16th century soldier in full regalia appeared at the bottom of his bed about like three o'clock in the morning. Roger Moore wakes up, sees this guy there. To, instead of he did, you know, he's got that very posh voice. Mm -hmm. Yes. He said, oh, are you lost? Can I, can I help you? Can I help you at all? Are you lost? <laughs> <laughs> it just made me laugh because it's Roger Moore through and through. Right. You know. Are you sure? Oh, can you I help you? Are you Moore, lost? But... <laughs> no, yeah. 007, absolutely. He, he, he was. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Well, because it, I'd like to see the that one. they're close to where Mark right, is now is Lincoln's funeral train. Yeah. Lincoln's funeral train. Yeah. yeah. We've supposedly seen that around Springfield. Yeah, I've, I've heard about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Um, well, guys, I've, it's I've been an absolute a, delight. A ghost tour, which was really, really good. Yep. It, it has been, it has been it has been so much fun having you guys on here. Uh the mods have dropped all these links in the chat to get to everybody and you know where to find Steve's books and of course ours is on there too and Amazon We Are All Children in the Wilderness of the Afterlife. Mark read that book, didn't you, Mark? I've read your book and I've also it's very good. And I've also read Steve's earlier stuff that he didn't mention. Um I can't remember. The oh, title. Strange was, Things in the Woods, Kindle. parts one and, and two, into, and uh, one, one of my, my Strange World. Yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so yeah, much one fun. Of my There's so much stuff from Steve. Was was yeah, but one about the bus with the two little girls in it. Yeah, oh. and the creepy story of the disappearing bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah I love so, that. Yeah, that yeah, one, the yeah, flying yeah. Co the yeah. flying coffin, and there's so many. Uh, there's so many. The kittens under the sta The yeah. that would have made me nuts yeah. under the floor. So if you haven't um, read some of Steve's older, uh, the the first uh, stuff that came out that he yeah, did, really good. absolutely go back and get that too. And if you like Steve's stuff and you're a friend of the show, um, and I've invited Mark. I know you're going trick or treating, but here's what we've got going on next week. We are having uh, October 31st at eight p.m. Eastern Standard Time this chat and a lot of people that are going to call in and gather up we are having an All Hallows Eve costume video call in ghost story party and happy birthday Steve Stockton on uh, the 31st so we're going to come in and, and wear our costumes happy birthday, and Steve. You, can no, call, you. you can call in trick or treating with your phone Mark and just call in and say ha you know, give us a ghost story or whatever and go on back to trick or treating share yeah. the candy with you, all of us the pillowcase of candy with all of us it would be wonderful if you can come you know where if I'm you can make be it trick or treating Friday night do you know where I'm going to be Friday night where no actually I'm not I'm going to be in Hannibal Hannibal Missouri wow um, doing a ghost tour which oh, is where wonderful. Mark Twain comes from, came from. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. And I'm we, jealous. We just started going there. It's a lovely place, lovely place. That sounds so, lovely. And we'll then call over in. the weekend, I'm doing trick and treating with, with the grandkids. Oh, that would be lovely so, if you could yeah, call yeah. and show us That's the grandkids in their costume. That would be really awesome. Good at stuff. <laughs> it's yeah. okay just hit just hit the link follow in say hi yeah, yeah. and that's what everybody can do we're going to set up so uh before i let you go i gotta let you know if you have any friends in the chat uh we're going to put the link in the chat but if you have other people that want to call in want to be a part of this we're going to share the link for that night the only cost is you have to come in with a ghost or scary story and tell it and uh for for steve's birthday we're gonna have a nice vintage 1960s halloween and we might go back a little further too so i love you all thank you so much mark for coming in tonight love you steve love you everybody you. in the chat thank you for inviting me thank you oh you're so welcome you got to come back everybody love to have you back and we got a little outro and listen 
Mulder Keep your loves feet. You too. Oh, we love you, Mulder. <laughs> Mr. Dickens was here earlier too. Keep your feet under the covers. Keep your closet door shut because there are things that go bump in the night. Right, guys? <laughs> Mulder said yes. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>